What about the famous New Year ball? Well, when the New Year, when the New York Times opened its new headquarters in Times Square in 1904, the owner Alfred Ox not only convinced the city to rename the intersection, formerly known as Long Acre Square, but he also threw a grand party to celebrate the milestone. The New Year's Eve event started with an all-day street festival. For decades, residents of the United States cities would synchronize, that's just a fancy, smashy word for match, little Hebrews, their pocket watches using a giant globe that would descend from a pole in a public space to mark the exact hour. Now, remember, these people were sun worshippers, so matching their pocket watches with the giant globe symbolized synchronizing their watches with the sun. Ox conceived of a decorative time ball that would descend just before midnight to mark the exact end of the year. The first ball to drop an illuminated 400-pound iron and wood orb was lowered from a flagpole. Tradition took root, and the ball has been used almost every year since. Now, what is an orb, little Hebrews? An orb is a demon in the form of a ball of light. They are usually seen in pictures, mistaken for the light from the camera flash. Remember what demons are, little Bruce. Spirits who worship and do the will of Satan. Satan is also known as Lucifer. Lucifer means light bearer. So the reason the Grand New Year's Ball is illuminated at night is because it represents Satan, the light in the midst of the darkness. And the people around are the illuminated ones because they have the light, seeing the light in the darkness. This ball also falls from a pole, like Satan and his angels fell from the highest heaven. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 tells us, Oh, how have you fallen from the heavens, O Lucifer, son of the morning? You have been cut down to the ground, you who laid low the nations. Revelations chapter 12 verse 4 to it tells us, And his tail, talking about Satan, little bruise, draws a third of the stars, angels, of the heaven, and throws them to the earth. And we're going to stop there because that's where we want to focus on. It is after this ball falls that people begin their wild partying. This symbolizes the chaos that Satan and his fallen angels bring to mankind. Now, what about the song, O Lang Zion? This New Year's song is generally credited to a man named Robert Burns. O Lang Zion is about old friends who have parted and meet again. To celebrate their long friendship, they share a drink together and reminisce of memories from long ago. The basic message is that we should not forget our old friends and should celebrate a reunion with them. Yeah, right. Seems innocent enough. Hmm. But who was Robert Burns? Well, he is regarded as the pioneer or the founder of the Romantic Movement. Now, another word for the Romantic Movement, Little Hebrews, is the Age of Enlightenment. Another name for Enlightenment is Illumination. There that word is again. Smells like Satan's in a mess. Anyway, the celebration of his life and work became almost a national cult during the 19th and 20th centuries. So let's put it in perspective. You have an orb 
descending in the mist of the darkness, and people singing songs written by the founder of the movement of illumination. So Hebrews, this is one big party for the devil. Let's look at one more part of New Year's. Father time. Another symbol of New Year's celebrations is equally pagan. It is the familiar figure of a white-haired man carrying a scythe, a tool with the blade that used to be used to cut grass that's now replaced by machinery. But who is he? The ancient Greek god Kronos. You may know him better as Father Time. It is from the name Kronos we derive our chronograph, which measures time. Also note Times Square, from which the big celebration for Satan takes place on New Year's. Among the Greek gods, Kronos, also known as the Silent Reaper, anciently reaped little children in horrible episodes of cannibalism. Now, for those of you who don't know, cannibalism is people who eat other people. This Greek rite of human sacrifice was adopted by ancient Rome, where human sacrifice was practiced. Speaking of sacrifice, in this picture, what you see is that in fear of a prophecy that he would be overthrown by his son, Kronos swallowed each of his children as soon as they were born. Ugh! Disgusting, right? Well, let's go to scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 31 says, Do not do so to Yah, your power. For every abomination which Yah hates they have done to their mighty ones. For they even burn their sons and daughters and the fire to their mighty ones. Today, sons and daughters are burned in the fire when they bow down to Ashra, also known as the Christmas tree, because of gifts they receive from the fire god, also known as Santa Claus or Nimrod. Today, sons and daughters are burned in the fire when the obsessive drinking and partying ultimately leads to human sacrifice also known as the murders making the nightly news on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. Today, little children, parents, and people everywhere are on the road that will literally lead them into the everlasting fire because they unknowingly or knowingly worship gods and goddesses during the keeping of these hella days. If you must remember anything, little Bruce, remember this. Holidays are the worship of gods because they are Satan's holy days where people have these feasts and all of these wild parties and all of this drinking to drunkenness. And that is the reason that we shouldn't partake in it because we don't worship Satan. We worship Father Yah. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 through 21 tells us, See then that you walk exactly, little Hebrews, not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are wicked. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the desire of Yah is, and do not be drunk with wine, in which is loose behavior, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to each other in psalms and songs of praise and spiritual songs and singing and striking the strings in your heart to the master. Giving thanks always for all to Yah the Father in the name of our master Yahoshua the Messiah. Subjecting, subjecting yourselves to each other in the fear of Yah. Yah instructs us not to have fellowship with those of wild and wicked ways. Yah instructs us to walk in the light, 
not Satan's light, which is darkness, but to walk in Yahoshua, who is the true light and who walked in the spirit and not in the flesh. I tell you what, would Yahoshua drink to drunkenness and go to partying in the streets? What would Yahoshua do? If Yahoshua wouldn't do it, little bruise, or if Yahoshua didn't do it, little bruise, then we shouldn't do it either. And that is the end of the lesson. Shabbat Shalom, peace on the Sabbath day, and Boker Tov.